forward. Okay, welcome everybody. We're here at uh, the Beacon in uh, Wasaga Beach. Uh, today is um, December, I think the 7th today. And it's good to be here among friends, uh, some new, some old. Um, and uh, this is our second uh, business networking meeting here at the Beacon. Uh, last time we uh, almost had somebody on Zoom, but they fell off um, just before the meeting started. They, they had to depart. But we do have a few of a few people, a couple of the, uh, several people who were here in person last week are on Zoom today. They, they couldn't be here in person for um, for different reasons. And we also have um, Pamela, who's going to uh, uh, support um uh, uh, sorry, Don, in doing a presentation. So the, the typical format of the meetings is that we go around, uh, everybody takes one to two minutes, introduce themselves, uh, tell a little bit about their business, and then we have a couple of uh, longer presentations. Jude uh, St. Fleur, is that the correct That's pronunciation? Correct. <laughs> is also doing a presentation today. He's an uh, he, he's, uh, investment advisor. He's going to talk about uh, insurance and investments today. Right. And um, Don uh, is a advertising and media consultant. And everyone was really excited last week, especially when we heard how much she's been helping Norm with his business, her husband. Um, uh, and um, so she is gonna do a talk today together with, uh, with Pamela. Pamela uh, works with uh, Dawn about, uh, about advertising. So um, what will, um, uh, we'll, still, we'll still have, um, uh, okay, so let's, let's have the present, the, we'll skip over the uh, presenters during the brief introductions, and then the presenters will have more time, they can introduce themselves and do their, their little presentation. So let's, let's start with Brian. Brian, um, uh, Brian Davies, welcome. Glad you can make it out today. Tell us about yourself and your business, please. Thank you, David. Uh, my name is Brian Davies, and my company's name is Brian Davies Photography. I've been doing all types of photography about, for about 40 years. Um, we're mainly doing editorial and commercial photography lately. If you look into the, uh, the issue of a Georgian life in the November issue, we did the cover for that particular gentleman with his uh, uh, soldier. But, anyway. but um, doing, doing a lot of, uh, I really enjoy doing magazine and uh, uh, newspaper photography. We also do uh, business portraits, real estate photography, uh, commercial. I, I, one of my specialties is food photography. So it's really nice because we get to eat the food out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good. Benefits. Uh, my wife and I live in, in the beach, but, and um, she's a PSW. She helps on a lot of the photo shoots. So we drive all over the place taking pictures for people. But, uh, if you check out the uh, December issue of uh, Georgian Life. You'll see most of my pictures in there for various events and things around. That's uh, about it. And uh, I could also add that you are a Frank Sinatra tribute artist. That's yeah. true, yes. You, you do, do you do some vo voiceover work as well? I do or? some voiceover work as well. Uh, I'm aged in London, Ontario. I do uh, some radio and TV work uh, right from the studio in the house, so it's kind of a if you need a, a good radio commercial uh, voice, uh, you can take care of that too. So. There you go. Excellent. Nice. And um, uh, Brian was out to uh, at least a couple of music events, two or three music events mm -hmm. that uh, uh, that we ran, and uh, he sang some Frank Sinatra tunes, which uh, everybody enjoyed. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's always a good time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Okay, excellent. And Cindy, um, welcome. Uh, tell, tell us about yourself, please. Uh, my name is Cindy Jameson. I um, have been in the beach now since February of 2020. Before that, we were in Creemore. Before that, we we're down south. Anyway, um, I sell doors and trim for from a company called Tofino Door and Trim, which is located in Stouffville, Ontario. I am an outside salesperson, is what I am. So I do go all over the place. Uh, usually, if people need that kind of requirement up here, I found most of the time, almost 100% of the time, our prices are better than what you can buy locally. So please keep me in mind. Um, on the flip side of that one, and 
not only that, we can supply custom stuff and exterior doors as well. So we can do custom things. My husband and I also have a contracting business. I've uh, been in business since the 80s. That's a long time ago. Um, but we do interior work. We do some renovations, bathrooms, additions. We just recently finished a little bunkie for Jerry. And I think he's pretty happy with that. So that's what we're doing. And we are obviously looking for some more business locally as opposed to having new back south, which is where most of our contacts are just because it's been established for a long time. But that's what we do. Okay, excellent. Welcome. Jerry, thanks for uh, telling Cindy uh, about the event today. It's nice to meet you, Cindy. Thank you. I, I hear, though, that you did attend uh, an event that we did a while ago online. Online, Jerry about I. a year ago. Right. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Well, yeah. welcome. Good Thank to have you, you here. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Rob, Rob Hutchison. Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, my name is Rob Hutchison. I'm with Century 21. I'm uh, living in Wasaga for permanently for 15 years, but I've been coming up here all my life. And I said Wasaga, not Wasaga. It's so, a correct Dave, way of Dave, saying it. Uh, David knows it correctly. I change it. I change it depending on how many drinks I have. And it's only been hot chocolate this morning. So. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of real estate agents around. I find uh, my business partner and I, our, our, our value add is that we uh, we have a full time handyman on staff that if uh, people need to get repairs done. <laughs> or the house cleaned out, stuff like that, painted. We 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 will include that in our commissions. So that way, it's not a value or it's not an extra cost to our to our clients. And uh, we were voted the best real estate agents out of uh, Owen Sound uh, for 2021. Wow. And um, yeah, that's basically it. That's awesome. Um, Rob, how, how much difference does it make, do you think, like if a house is staged or, you know, some repairs are made or it uh, hits the market? Does it does it make a very big difference? It, it makes a huge difference. A lot of it is, and Brian will attest to it, is the, it's how things look in the picture. And if there's a lot, the biggest thing is uh, decluttering and just making sure that you can show the space. Uh, and then people will use their imagination to decide what, how that space is going to work for them. So it's a, it's percentage wise i'm not i'm not going to say a number but i right. i know it's definitely uh for selling it makes things a lot better yeah easier yeah. Pre sure. presentation is a big uh yeah it's a big part of it's it. a big part of it sure. for sure yeah. yeah and having nice professional photos too right that's right right yeah. Yeah. very yeah key. for sure good all right excellent thanks for that um jerry over to you buddy hey um jerry hogenhout uh i'm uh, an accountant uh i'm from Toronto, but I've had a cottage up in Sega Beach for uh, ever, 25 years, I think. So I love coming up the beach, just don't get up there enough. And I look forward to one day actually living up there. So um, yeah, but thank you, David, for creating this networking group. Uh, one problem with not being in the beach very much is I've never really got to meet a lot of people up there. So it's nice to meet people now and uh, network from a business point of view and a, and a social point of view. So. Look forward to spending more time up there. All right, Jerry, good. Thanks very much for that, Jerry. And uh, Jerry presented last week. He gave us some good insights, and he also presented at Boston Pizza, did a, did a full hour. Uh, it was a well-attended uh, event over at Boston Pizza, mainly targeted towards realtors and real estate investors. Um, but, uh, but it was good. And we had about 20 people. On, on zoom for that one so uh that was fun okay so i'll tell you a bit about myself and then we'll go over to don and pamela to talk about advertising so i'm a more so oh on oh norm so sorry norm i forgot about norm so actually let's let's let uh, sorry about that norm thanks for the so actually let's uh, norm um I'll, I'll go over to you before i introduce myself you tell us tell us about yourself please my name is Norm Di Pietro. Uh, I've lived in the beach uh, since 2008. I moved. We moved up here um, 2008 because uh, all my first cousins have been up in Wasaga Beach since 1968. So um, we moved up here uh, because we lost our jobs in the in the city. And I was a heavy equipment operator for about 10 years, 12 years. Uh, worked for Park Bridge and then had the opportunity to purchase this window fashion business, which I currently own now. Uh, been in business for six years. I sell uh, Canadian made uh, window fashions, blinds and shutters, and I also sell uh, Mirage retractable screen doors for your front of your house. Uh, and yeah, that's 
pretty much my business. I'm busy. I won the Reader's Choice Award three years in a row, which I'm very grateful for due to all the voting of my clientele. What's the and, name of your business, Norm? It's Blue Mountain Design Center. Thank you. Hey, uh, Norm. Uh, I got you covered. Tell us, uh, tell us uh, if you would, what was the transition like? I mean, to go from being uh, a machine operator to being a business owner where you know, uh, I mean, I, I always think that knowing how to sell and market yourself is uh, is such a, uh, an important part of any business. What was it like? I mean, you, you jumped in with both feet there, buying a business and coming from something that, you know, where you were mainly, I guess, working with machines. How, how did you make that transition? Um, well, I can't, well, I grew growing up in Orangeville. I'm originally from Orangeville. Jerry, I've known Jerry pretty much my whole life. <laughs> um, so... My parents had a machine shop business in uh, Orangeville that we ran for over 20 years. So I had had that kind of a background and then uh, for the business. And then uh, I just got back into my roots, grew up, grew up on a dairy farm and stuff like that. So um, I was running heavy equipment, had the opportunity, was an opportunity. My friend was selling the business and uh, we decided to take a risk. Uh, we purchased it and there was no looking back. We're, we're doing great. It was actually... Um, I had renovation experience. Um, I went from uh, severe manual labor to doing what I do now, which I had known this 20 years ago. So, Okay, gotcha. And, and I mean, this will be like a segue into, um, uh, into Don's presentation a little bit later, but um, how, like, did you start using uh, marketing and advertising services of Don's services right away or were you using other forms of marketing and advertising initially? No, nope, all it was all done. Uh, got me, you know, got me out there and got me relevant in the newspaper so that every time somebody looked at the classifieds, they'd see my ad. And um, my business is a lot of uh, referrals, um, a lot of uh, previous clients that have either sold their home and they've downsized or they've moved into a bigger home. And, and uh, yeah, and it's just word of mouth just travels faster than the internet, I find. So, right. Yeah, Don's the, uh, She's the one that's uh, got me, got me going, and got me out there. So it all advertising does pay off. All right. Okay. Great. Well, we look forward to hearing more about that um, in a few minutes. So I'll just tell you briefly uh, about myself. I'm a mortgage broker, and um, I've been arranging mortgages now for about 18 years, and uh, I do mainly residential, but I've done um, a lot of commercial transactions. I've done uh, land construction um, and I work with first time buyers. I work with uh, move up buyers um, and I work with people who are not getting what they want from the bank for, for whatever reason, they could be self-employed and we know with self-employed people, sometimes they're gonna be minimizing what they report for tax purposes and then they go to the bank and the bank looks at their tax returns and says, well, you're not making enough money, but sometimes, you know, if they have a good accountant like Jerry or somebody else who's helping them to minimize taxes, uh, they don't look great on paper. So we have solutions for, for people like that. Uh, lots of good lenders out there uh, who specialize in, in working with self-employed people, property investors who might own multiple properties uh, people who want to do fix and flips, maybe they buy a property and the property's in, in you know, uh, substandard condition. Um, banks typically don't want to lend on properties unless they're looking, you know, really, uh, really nice and um, uh, generating income. But there's a time period, could be three months or six months, where people need time to reha rehab is the word, rehabilitate uh, a property to bring it up to standard. Um, people may have a credit issue, they might need a second mortgage to, uh, or to refinance in order to pay off some debts. Um, so we have all kinds of mortgage solutions uh, for, um, for people in, in different situations. And people have a lot of equity in their property now um, because uh, values have gone up. And so some people are looking to take out equity to either buy more properties or you know, invest in their business or whatever it is. And um, uh, we can help people in, in a variety of situations. Um, so that's my story. So why don't we go over now to um, to Don and to uh, Pamela and um, 
uh, if you guys want to do your uh, presentation slash uh, discussion about um, advertising and such, we would love to hear from you guys. All right. Um, so my name is Dawn Claire. I'm multimedia marketing consultant for Star Metroland Media. Our local newspapers um, are the Wasaga Stainer Sun and the Collingwood Connection. I am here with my colleague, my manager, and my friend, Pamela Amaro. We've worked together for approximately 10 years. Um, she's here to assist in answering any questions you may have. Her specialty is real estate and mortgage brokers, as well as all the other advertising methods to help your business grow. So today um, we're gonna talk mainly about digital advertising because I mentioned it last time and uh, there seemed to be some interest. Um, so we have many, many forms of advertising digitally for your business. Um, I have just listed a few of my favorites like Facebook. So what we do is we would send your ad to other people's Facebook or social media page um, and you pick the demographics that you want to hit, um, the postal codes you want to hit, um, any specific areas. We can take it right down to street names, etc. cetera. Um, um, and it's just targeting audiences that you choose to target. Um, we also send you, for any kind of digital advertising, we also send you a, a report monthly um, we can go over that together um, to see how the campaign's working for you. And at that time, if it's not working as well as you expect, we can adjust things on the back end um, to make changes to it easily. Um, another form is our website is Simcoe.com um, or um, the Toronto Star, Torstar.com. Um, we can put your ad or a teaser ad of yours on our pages of our website and um, people would see it come up as they're reading through the paper on, online and they just click on it and it would go straight over to your website for more information. Um, we also have online display advertising. It's called contextual targeting. It puts your ads in front of people who are browsing sites that fall under your category, um, similar to your business. We can um, target it by keywords. Um, we um, put your ads in front of people who are browsing content that includes keywords related to your target audience. Also following demographic demographics that you choose. Um, they could be male, female, homeowners, etc. cetera. Um, uh, my, my other favorite is geofencing. So Metroland's uh, mobile geofencing service gives you an opportunity to hyper-target your message by showing ads to users when they're browsing on their mobile device in specific geographical locations. Um, that's great for Visitors that come to town, like in the summer, when people come in from Toronto, uh, they're sitting on the beach, they're, they're on, the, on their uh, phone looking for places to eat, um, real estate people, whatever, we can put that onto their mobile phone, um, your information. Um, yeah, so uh, we can also um, help with email marketing. Um, this allows advertisers to deliver their brand directly to the user's inbox, providing exposure to dedicated audiences. Um, um, yeah, so that's just a little touch on a few of the things that we do. There's so much more, of course. Um, if you wanted more information on that, you can always reach out directly to either Pamela or myself. Um, we also have flyers that I do, um, I can print them, design them, deliver them, um, or if you already have them, I can uh, just deliver them through our newspaper or um, through Canada Post. Um, and last of all, we have our Good Life magazine. I've given David uh, some to hand out for me. 
Um, it's a beautiful magazine. Uh, we put it out, we were doing seasonally, but now we're, we're going about three times a year, the, uh, the spring, summer, and winter editions. Uh, it's been going around for about 16 years now, I believe. Um, the next edition is April of 2022. Um, and it reaches mid to high end home. So we've picked the demographic for that one. Mm, and that's about it. So I hope you enjoy the magazine. <laughs> I put my business card on it in case you want to reach out. Don, and I'm going to interrupt you there for a sec. Of course, I'm going to, first thing I did with the magazine is I went and I looked for my ad. So yeah, I've been working with uh, Don and Pamela for a little while now. And they're so easy to work with and they do a great job. So yeah, and everything looks good just as I had asked. So thank you very much for, for that. Is that the first time you've seen it? Yes. Um, do you create okay. the, the magazine? We, yeah, we do. Our um, general manager is actually the editor of the magazine as well. Something else I just wanna add about Good Life. Good Life has been around in Barrie for close to 30 years. And a lot of people have seen ours for the last 16 years. But they seem to be really, especially if you live in the city, really familiar with Muskoka Life. Muskoka Life is very well read by some, you'll see a lot of stars that are up at their cottage posting saying, just sitting here reading my good life. Or my, sorry, Muskoka Life. Muskoka Life is ours as well. So it was branched off of good life. They're all connected. The nice thing about good life as well that I'll just add is it's also put onto our website. So on Simcoe.com, we get approximately 1.4 million page views per month of people looking online for newspaper information. So all of our magazines are posted there as well. So it's another great avenue of people seeing you. I get asked a lot. I mean, digital, we've got so much. Don touched on them. Great job, Don, explaining them too. Um, did you bring up email marketing? Because that seems to be a big one. Did you talk about that I as well? I on it. I didn't say much about it. It's yeah. Okay. Because that seems to be one that a lot of companies are looking at because we are emailing, you know, to our start, I think Don mentioned to you guys last week, we've got over 80 newspapers. It's our audience. It's our reach. We've got huge reach right across Canada, which is really beneficial. Um, the email marketing, you can pick the clientele that you're trying to target. So we'll use Norm for an example, or even Rob, we could use a realtor. He could put in keywords of, you know, we want to target anybody in the city that's looking to move up to Georgia and South, Southern or South Simcoe or Owen Sound or Barrie or wherever he wants to go, we can do that. And we've got a huge list with the kit, which is another one of our well-known magazines, um, save.ca, which is a really well-known product that we have for flyers that are listed there. So there's so many avenues of our clients that have agreed to get emails from us and we start targeting them based on what your criteria is. There is no one, I get asked a lot from realtors. I've been, I've been working with realtors for 25 years between Metroland and an online company before this for 13 years. What's the best way to market myself? And there is no one stop way to do it. I always advise do a little bit of everything. If you can afford to do just a little bit in every little bit, whether it's online paper magazines, that's where you're going to benefit the most because there's not one place that everybody goes for looking for something. You're always going to target new people in different products. So that, that's all I just wanted to add about that. If anybody's interested, the great thing about our company is we've got so many products for online magazines, print, that we can literally customize a plan for you for your 2022 budget. You could say I have 500 or $1,000 or whatever your budget is. This is what I'm interested in. We will come back to you with a few recommendations and ideas of where we, what we can do for you once we know what your needs are. And that's kind of what we've been doing. Dawn's been doing with Norm and Dawn and I have both been doing with Rob because she's been doing his flyers as well. And hopefully he's starting to see some, some business in the last couple of months, Rob. In Wasaga Beach, like I know you do well in Owen Sound, but I know you're really targeting Wasaga Beach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you caught me with a mouthful of food there. So that's what I was going to say. No, all is yes, good. good. So I've got a question. Do you, do you guys do video advertising or just print? 
we actually do videos. Um, we don't do a lot of them. We don't have a lot of clients that are interested in them, but yes, we do do them. Okay. So we can do videos for you that you will then be able to post on all of your websites, social media. But do you create a video and then post it through your media stream? Yeah, yeah we okay. do. We actually blog as well. Yep. We okay. can do blog articles for you, which they kind of go through different times where they're really popular and then other times they're not. They're, they're starting to get more popular with articles now. It's called, we can do them online, native advertising as well, which is more of a blog style of an article, which right. is really good for accountants, realtors, mortgage brokers. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do you, do you help your clients do Facebook advertising? We do. Yes. We do Facebook. Um, we can literally target any area that you want to. And the people that you're trying to target for your business, we will serve them your ads. And it's very reasonably priced as well. So um, how important is repetition in advertising? Like when you say 500 to $1,000, dollars we are talking 500 to 1,000 a month, I would assume, or what, what are you thinking? And um, because I would assume that, you know, you want to become familiar with an, like, with an audience, right? So you don't want to be spread too thin um, and going to too many different audiences. What are, what are your thoughts about that, either, either of you? repetition is huge you have to be there consistently i always like using and it gets to be old in marketing and you've probably heard it before but it's the same as mcdonald's mcdonald's still advertises all the time not because they need to because it's the repetition of, of always being in your mind when you feel like oh i do feel like a burger i'm going to go to mcdonald's we all know who they are but they still advertise consistently when i say five to five hundred to a thousand dollars a month that's an average budget. We do have clients that are spending $200 a month and they're not doing digital, but they're doing a small ad in print just to keep them out in the papers, relevant people seeing it. Because it usually takes three to six times of anybody seeing your ad information before they're gonna call on it for call to action. Once in a while, you'll get that one client that's looking for a realtor or a mortgage broker or blinds and going, I'm calling him. But usually it's, we say three to six months. Where would, where would somebody pick up this, this magazine, Good Life magazine? I noticed it says $5.95 on it. I mean, do they, do they pay $5.95 or, and, and how do they get it? They don't. And for whatever reason, it's always been in all of our Good Life magazines for 25 years. And Muskoka Life has a price on it as well. But 7,500 copies are delivered in Southern Georgian Bay to higher end homes. And then 5,000 copies are put into our rock space throughout Southern Georgian Bay. So that could be grocery stores, um, the town of Wasaga Beach, Chuck's Roadhouse. They're all over the place. They do go very fast. And then it's online to the next issue. So for example, that issue right there is our December issue. It will be on Simcoe.com until April, until our spring issue comes out. Okay, so, so and is the magazine different? depending on where you are. Like I noticed if I open up um, the first page, this is a, a Wasaga Beach real estate agent. So, I mean, is that, you know, would Barry have a different um, set of ads in it? Yeah, Barry does. Now, that being said, we do have customers that market into multi-market. So we have some Barry clients that you'll see in there. And I'm not, I haven't seen this issue yet. I apologize, but you will see other clients. Um, there could be a retirement home or a construction company that's in this one because they service all of Simcoe. Same as I do have realtors that will market themselves in Alliston or Barry Good Life because they service the whole area. But this is this one is, is for Southern Georgian Bay. We used to have one for Alliston, which has been put on hold. And then we have Barry and Muskoka. Okay, very good. Um, Don mentioned that you uh, specifically do work with some mortgage brokers. Um, I, I don't need to know which mortgage brokers, but is there any kind of advertising that you found to be more effective than others where it comes to mortgages? 
You know, again, it, it depends on your budget. I always say start small and do a little ad in the paper, whether it be if you can go bi-weekly or once a month, just so that people it doesn't have to be every single week and a huge full page. It can be just a little eighth of a page ad and you could do it bi-weekly or monthly just to let people know who you are and that you're in this market. And then if you can afford to do a little bit of digital as well and take an ad space in good life, you're kind of conquering a little bit of everything. Okay. Is that kind of what you were asking me or did I misunderstand what you said? That's okay. Um, when you do um, email marketing, um, mm -hmm. who, does, who does the, I would assume the email comes from, so it arrives in my inbox, it's gonna say that it's coming from simco.com, but it could be an advertisement for a specific, um, uh, advertiser or do you have like multiple ads in a in a newspaper I mean how do you how do you do that excuse me so all of our people that we send out email marketing to have agreed to get newsletters and information from us any kind of marketing so once we've got the client specifications of what they're looking for we go through our list are you talking because I can you hear me still yeah, sorry, I asked for more coffee, so. Oh, sorry, okay, because I, I was like, I saw your mouth moving and I'm like, am I like on mute now? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, sorry, I just asked for more coffee. <laughs> so we'll say that we have, I'll use a number, we'll say that we have 200,000 people that have agreed to have our email sent to them through kit, through save.ca, through multiple channels. And I'm just using that number, that's not the number. Then we would go through those clients, figure out which ones fit what you're looking for, and then the message is sent. So, for example, we're doing one right now for one of my builders, um, and it's, you know, photos in the email saying only six left, um, and we've targeted higher end clients for them. But all of the people that we send emails to are subscribers of ours whether it be through the star or the kit or save.ca, we have multiple channels of people that we target through email marketing. Gotcha. Does anyone have any other questions on advertising? What kind of advertising does, does Norm do? What's working? Everything. Don, Don makes him do everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, Norm, is that how you won all these awards or do you actually do good work? Uh, well, apparently, from what my clients tell me, because they're the ones that all voted for him. So. The only problem is when he does everything, he's a one man show. So uh, he gets a bit too busy. So I just put stuff on hold for a little bit till he catches up and then I get him back out there. So, yeah, it's good. It's all good. Love that magazine. That's a great magazine. I used to have it in my store. And when people would come in, they would grab it and people just couldn't get enough of it. They used to love it. They and would actually come in, make a point. Hey, is a new magazine in yet? And tell them about the other day when you saw that your ad on somebody's fridge. Yeah, I went into a client's place and there was my ad out of the paper on the fridge. They cut it out. They cut it out. Right. There you go. Advertising <laughs> so Norm's ad is in the good life, that good life that you have twice. So you got to look for him in there. All right. The nice the nice thing about Good Life too is there's amazing editorial in it. They try to focus on businesses. So if anybody has anything that they're doing, like an event or anything coming up, there's a lot of great information in that, which is what I love about it. We feature local chefs. We feature local artists. We feature events coming up. So if you ever have something like that or a high-end home rod, just let me know. Um, we do do a feature home in every single issue. It's a four page spread that we do. And we usually have picked it a couple of months before we run the next issue. And it's free for that free for the feature home that we do. So all of that stuff that's in there is really good information, which is why a lot of people really like this magazine, because it's the content of what we are in Southern Georgian Bay, too, and who we have here. Yeah, it's so local. That's yeah. great. Thanks. Okay, great presentation, uh, ladies. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That was great. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go over to uh, Food Saint Fleur. Yes. Uh, with Eau Claire Partners Investment Advisor, um, Jude. The floor is yours. Welcome. Okay. Hey. Well. Thank you. Thank you for the, putting this together. Uh, so yes, my name is, is Jude Saint Fleur. I'm born and raised in Montreal. 
Um, my, uh, from a family of uh, immigrants uh, from Haiti. So my, uh, my mom and dad immigrated to uh, Canada. They wanted me to be born apparently in Canada to have the, uh, the perfect life, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> more importantly, the, um, the thing that struck me is um, growing up, uh, money was not um, a subject that we talked about. It was a taboo subject in our, basically in our community, right? So growing up, growing up with a really, um, like kind of poor, um, but also I had a good life because they worked hard to put food on the table, right? So they were never taught about wealth building, wealth preservation and pass on uh, the uh, estate to, to their kids like myself. So when, um, when my dad passed away back in 2014, uh, he had no, uh, from cancer, so he had no protection whatsoever, but he did have a little bit of uh, life insurance that actually covered the uh, uh, the the funeral, which helped me. So when I was going through chemo and all that, I had a lot of expenses out of pocket. So being young at that time, um, well, young, I was in my twenties. Uh, it was hard. Yeah, it was hard dealing with that and seeing like uh, dying in front of my eyes, and I couldn't do anything. Uh, so what happened is at the time too, I had my brand new little daughter. She's 14 now, so you can say, take the mad that she was brand new. Five days after he passed away, she was born. And when when that happened, I'm like, I vowed to myself that never, ever things like that will happen to her. So um, try to figure out my way to get into the industry, um, go to school, drop out of school, find a job, got fired back in 2008. Then I finally joined the military to have stability with my uh, with my wife. And yeah, so I could put I put that in the back of my mind, but it was keep uh, every year there, there was something that keeps bringing bringing me back to the industry. And finally, three years ago, uh, when we were stationed in Cobra Cabrera, um, saw an ad online, the YouTube so for life insurance investment, and like this is what I wanted to do. And just by uh, pure luck, is to take the course. Past. I'm like, oh, I got a license now. Now I'm trying to get my footing and get into the industry, but it's been very good to me. So the topics that I want to cover now is just in terms of insurance, uh, first and foremost, and investment. So at the foundation for wealth building and wealth preservation. So we all know that at the bottom of it is, is life insurance. Right. You could put all the investments you want, you could have everything, but in terms of wealth preservation, wealth transfer, life insurance is the basic of it, all right, in terms of the protecting your asset. Because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the most important asset that you have is yourself, right? So you provide an income for your family, you bring food on the table, you pay for like sports for the kids. So you have to protect yourself and make sure that uh, those base of cover. So in terms of life insurance, you have two components. So you have first the term insurance, which the, the name says it, it's temporary, right? It's for uh, mid to long-term uh, debt, like a house, uh, if you have a car um, or anything like that, and to replace your income as well, if you have uh, younger kids. That's, uh, that's the basic of it. So basically the term insurance is just to cover for a certain time, so 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, the, uh, the premium is, is usually really low, it's really cheap to have, but you can have a big coverage up to the millions of dollars, it doesn't cost you a whole lot. Uh, but the thing with that is, as soon as you try to renew it, the uh, premium goes way high. So that's when you get into trouble that you no longer insured because you're too old and, and whatnot. Um, but it's highly flexible as well. But the thing is, you're just putting money into it and there's nothing coming back to you. So uh, you basically your estate and your the beneficiary gets all that money if something were to happen during that time period. Versus now you have what we call permanent insurance uh, that compromise, uh, that, com that includes whole life and universal life. So what the key feature of those uh, permanent insurance, which I, I love is the fact that even though the premium uh, that you pay is slightly is higher than what a term is, but you have an, in, an investment component attached to it, right? Uh, so that means you could accumulate wealth uh, as a cash value within that policy. And when uh, you, you pass away, then you, you could use it as a 
well, not when you pass away, you could use it also as a living benefit by uh, the cash value. So you could borrow against it to leverage and put into other investment. Um, and also in terms of corporate uh, life insurance, you could do that in terms of uh, using your corporation to have that policy and which is fantastic to accumulate wealth and also uh, bring everything, any asset that you have in a tax, uh, high tax bracket, if, bracket within the corporation. So in those uh, policies, we can structure it in terms of key person insurance. So for the, the, the person in charge, uh, the one that you want to protect, uh, buy and sell agreements, but not, not to get into too much details. So it's pretty flexible. And also you have a way to structure it that once you, um, you pass away, you could uh, pass it on uh, to your beneficiaries. All right? uh, so after that, the second component of it is all your living benefit. So that includes critical insurance, uh, critical illness insurance, uh, which covers for any sickness that you, major sickness so that covers heart attack, cancer, stroke. So those are the main ones that we, we see here in Canada. I know cancer is a big one because it's close to heart. Uh, so my dad didn't have that. Uh, have he had it, uh, that would have been fantastic. Uh, so with that, it just gives you a lump sum of, um, uh, a lump sum tax-free that you could use while you go to, to treatments, you could pay for your bills, uh, just to live a, a life at least that you don't have that burden of trying to borrow from, from family and friends or to do the GoFundMe pages. So that's a fantastic uh, product to cover for that. But more so, there's options that people sometimes they don't, and they're not aware of. You could get your premiums back if you don't use it after a certain time. And if you pass away, then you could get those premiums back as well. That's one of the options. Uh, so that also is something that I'm, I'm really a big proponent of it because I know cancer is like one out, one out of four people get contracted uh, with cancer, if I'm not mistaken. So what, or maybe one out of two, I don't know. But it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty a, a larger percentage. Uh, so after that, you have what we call disability. So of course, if you get injured, then you're out of work, then you could get a certain percentage of your income or if you already uh, you have a group plan, you could top up the difference so that way uh, you're not too cash traps to, uh, to pay for your mortgage or pay for your, uh, for, your, for your debt that you have until you go back to work and you could have permanent disability as well attached to it if that were to happen. So you have that to cash uh, for, for uh, right? Uh, after that, what I cover as well is in terms of uh, health and dental. So that says itself so for dental work health medication and all that i do have access to that and long-term care so if you yourself or you have aging parents uh, that needs assistance that they're no longer able to um, uh, well take care of themselves so you have that protection to pay for uh, re uh, reorganize the house have a, a nurse practitioner come to your home um, also in terms of uh, meal, uh, there's expenses for um, ambulance as well that is covered into that. And so that's a fantastic plan for the aging community, especially here that I see that something that, that may be of use. And after that, we have uh, what we call group benefits for all the business owners that have employees. So you could set up a plan for them to contribute into it uh, for group RSPs, uh, group health and dental. So I have a fantastic proof of our partners that uh, we work hand in hand to provide those, uh, uh, those products, right? So there's a really a big, big, uh, <laughs> like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Uh, and I myself, as a broker, I do have access to the major carriers here in Canada. So I'm not tied into one particular company. So I could pick and choose. So when people sit down with me, we go through everything and pick and choose which one will make more sense for this situation. Right? So the typical advisor right now, if they go, they are with one company, they only have access to that one product that, that they will service you. Whereas myself, I branched out and I could pick and choose and we put a plan together, uh, which is solid and we could make adjustment as time goes by. So now if we switch gear in terms of investment, the big one that, we, uh, that I promote is uh, segregated funds. So if you're not really aware of it, 
Uh, it's uh, typically when you go to a bank, you get mutual funds, right? So it's uh, this, almost the same product, but the thing is that is attached to it. There's a protection uh, attached to it. So that means if you were to, uh, uh, to, to pass away, there's a, a, a guarantee for the, um, the your capital guarantee at death. So that way, if there's uh, the product of when, uh, if you pass away and the, um, how we call it, uh, the, the value of your funds is, low, uh, is lower because of the market, then the company will top it up to 100% of what uh, you put in in terms of capital. So not, it's not lost, okay? Uh, and the, the, the thing with that as well, it protects you for creditor protection. If you were to go through uh, a bankruptcy, then they will not, for, uh, they will not attack that. They will cover that. Here, uh, it bypassed probate. So probate, as uh, Jerry will probably know a lot about that when you do estate uh, estate tax planning, uh, probate uh, and estate is when you go through in front of the judge and the, all the asset is deemed sold and they have to disperse it to the beneficiaries and, and whoever is on the will. Uh, so with the segregated funds, it acts as a life insurance contract, which basically means that it bypassed that. And within a couple of weeks uh, after the paperwork is done, it will transfer that, um, that portion in cash uh, tax free. So there's no tax implication into that. Right. Um, and last but not least, so you have access to fund uh, to money fund managers. So I've been managing myself, but I do, we do put a plan together uh, to find the, uh, the major fund managers that uh, that we have within the, the plans. Okay. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of it that I could go more and more in details. But um, for for now, that's the gist of it. So if you're looking for TFSA, RRSPs. Uh, well, which uh, RSPs, I'm not a big fan of it, but it, we do have it. RESPs for education saving plans, RDSPs for disability saving plans. So if you have a, a disabled child or a disabled, disabled adult, they, they will have, uh, we have that as well. We, we could put together. So, uh, so in general, that's the, that's what we, that's what I do. So if you have any more questions, just feel free to, uh, uh, to ask and uh, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I just want to ask from a self-employed person. Yep. What what is there different things that we look as far as getting ongoing medical coverage or stuff like that? Like, do you have the other plans for? I, I I've heard. Yes. Uh. So for medical plan, um, you mean mostly for medication, or, or just because. So, yeah, I'm just looking for like some plan. I don't have any kind of health coverage right now. Okay. Other than COVID. So I'm looking for something that's enhanced. I don't have any pre-existing pre -existing conditions, but I'm just okay. looking for something. Yeah, we do have that, which is a, a health coverage that covers a medication if you need to go to a specialist as well. Okay. Um, and, and what that, like chiropractors, there's a little bit of it in it. Um, massage therapist also. So a pretty wide uh, range, and we could go through it and see what... Uh, what would make sense for you yeah is that part of the dental program or is that a complete separate program? uh it's part of the dental program so you, you could you pick and choose but they mostly it's a people take it together of course if you want dental you want a, another portion but you can separate them as well Good. Um, could you uh, could you explain uh, again if, if uh, the what is the difference between whole life and universal life? Yes. Yeah, so whole life, uh, there's uh, basically uh, universal life is uh, flexible in terms of the, uh, the the premiums. So you basically pay the minimum to keep the contract uh, intact to enforce, and you could put more into it and that difference will be put it into an investment that investment component and you accumulate uh, cash value with that whereas the whole life it's a one set amount and typically it's that the premium doesn't change and you have to pay for the entire um, the entire life of the, uh, the policy you could do it in quick pay in 10 or 20 years uh, but that cash value will be equivalent to what you will have as a as a debt benefit and so with the, with the whole life, it's mostly dividends. Whereas with the um, universal life, it will be with the, uh, the 
market right now. So the, the market gains. I've, I've heard. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, Jared, uh, great presentation. Thank you. Um, just wondering for the benefit of others, um, maybe explain how these permanent policies, how you can actually get back the premiums that you've paid over your life, which is a pretty cool thing about these policies. A lot of people probably don't know that. So maybe a touch on that if you don't mind. Yes. So uh, once you uh, set up a plan like this, and every time you put the the, uh, the funds into it, you could, and it's invested. So after a certain amount of years, uh, you, typically you will put, uh, put let's say ten thousand dollars, but you will have access in the cash value of it, uh, that ten thousand dollars that is available for you to use. Uh, so basically, if you were to have access to it, you could uh, do a loan against it. And so that way it doesn't touch a capital and it keeps on growing uh, without touching that capital. So you could use that in terms of uh, buying other assets. Uh, and then typically you just pay it uh, within, the, uh, within the, the policy or it is covered by that, uh, by that life insurance. Are there tax implications for it? taking that money like if you know. okay so if you were to do a loan there's no tax implication but if you physically take out the money out of that uh, plan then yes there's a there's tax implication okay. Okay. so typically what we would like to do is uh we borrow against it and use it as leverage for to put it into other investments so okay it's fantastic we, we built it in a way that uh, you get your money back uh within uh, the first uh seven to ten years and yeah, depending on how uh, how high you uh, uh, how fast you want it to, to get it back within a certain limit because right. we, uh, we have limits that we uh, that we have to make sure we don't go over for that. Right. I I heard that um uh that some companies were pulling their critical illness products off the shelf or something like that. Is that true, or what's the story with critical illness these days? Uh, the, um, with critical illness, they are changing the, the way uh, in terms of the definition for the uh, the, the the illness itself. Um, so there's some companies that don't that will no longer advertise it. And when I say the uh, the health options that you could get your premiums back, they're slowly getting away from it because it's costly to them. Mm -hmm. So we still have access to some of it. Um, well, I don't know exactly when it will change, but the, the industry is changing. So the definition of a heart attack is not the same as it was 20 years ago. Um, so there's some plans that uh, right now that you will have that will no longer cover um, uh, some of the uh, the previous uh, illness that you may have, or the definition will be completely different. So when, when you try to make a claim, uh, they probably won't... Uh, if you don't fill within the those parameters, you probably won't get it. Or, right? uh, but they do. Have some there's some of them that are getting away from uh, from it because they uh, it's, it's costly. Right? So if you had a plan like that that's totally paid off, mm -hmm. um, so there's no more premiums due on it, uh, so does it get grandfathered into the past whatever the parameter was at that time or not? Or do you know? Uh, that I will have to verify. Okay. But um, mostly for the people that had those plans previously from yep. before they changed, uh, before they were grandfathered to uh, whatever the, the new ones, because it was already in place before right. those changes. Yeah. Uh, but I will have to double check. I'd be curious to know. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, I've heard uh, somebody once uh, had, you know, I guess there's different investing philosophies. Somebody said that. They, shot, they thought uh, people should buy term insurance and invest the difference mm -hmm. yes. as opposed to, I guess, considering permanent or whole life policies. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? All right, so that I've heard that a lot of buy term, invest the rest. Um, but seriously, in all honesty, who actually, who does that? Who, who actually invests the difference? Right? Nobody. So, you know, well, <laughs> nobody. So you, you have a term insurance that you have in hand, which probably is, let's say, $20. And the difference of $100, what do you do with it? Most of the time, you spend it. Right? So with those products, it actually builds discipline because you just pay it and you don't even see it. And also, when it comes to renew, then you have a, a, a policy that uh, the, that premium that almost double or triple the mm -hmm. price. And now you're you're stuck with it because you want to renew, 
or else you just cancel it and you no longer cover, right? And then you try to redo it down the line, but it's way more expensive anyway because you're older. So it doesn't make sense. Um, but there's, I know there's a lot of companies, well, one in particular, uh, that uh, is a big proponent uh, of that. But uh, the uh, universal life, the way that it's structured is highly flexible. Uh, you, the minimum that you have to put is only to cover the, put the, the keep the plan in place, but you can pretty much put whatever uh, the, up to the maximum uh, the limit uh, allowed in it, and it will be make a major difference for in, in the lifetime. So that way you could become your unlimited benefits as well, like I mentioned before, you could use it for any other things that you do. And there's no, uh, there's no implication in terms of tax if you don't physically take it out of there at that point. Okay, very good. Uh, Jude, thanks for that. That was a very good presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of good presentations today. So uh, I'll take the video as long as the video turned out. I'm glad that the Zoom worked. Everyone can hear and see each other. I think that's that's a bonus. Hopefully the video worked out. If it, if it did, I'll be posting it uh, online again. And uh, we got quite a few views actually on our last video. And uh, of course, um, what I do is I uh, post it together with everybody's uh, name and contact information. So as long as the video is being circulated um, and in, in, I use it to, to advertise future events too. I've been using mainly uh, Facebook, but anyone who registered will receive an email from me with a copy of, uh, of the video. I put it on YouTube, so it's very easy to share. I encourage you to share it. Um, so in the remaining few minutes that we have, because we're going to wrap up uh, at 1030, uh, it's just, I say, just let's, let's have an open forum. If people have um, suggestions on if there's anything uh, you think we can do to improve this group uh, or expand this group, um, I'd be interested if, if people want to make any suggestions at all. I mean, I, I would I would just like to say, and I, I said it at the last meeting, I mean, I think that, um, you know, where where is everybody here in Wasaga Beach? <laughs> no? uh, I mean, I, I've been I've been advertising this event, um, you know, just posting it in probably six, seven or eight different uh, social media groups for Wasaga Beach. And people are seeing it. They're 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 asking questions. They're liking, uh, they're liking the post. So it is getting some exposure. Um, but it seems like a lot of things in life that it's that word of mouth is is very powerful. And um, you know, uh, uh, Jerry uh, told you, Cindy, about uh, today's today's event. So you're here. Well, I and saw it, but I asked him about it. <laughs> you, you, I did oh, see it on so Facebook. You saw, you saw it I on did. Facebook. Yes, okay. I did. And I saw that he's going to be a presenter. <laughs> okay, so there, so there's an example of where uh, advertising together with word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, you know, people see or hear something uh, more than once, or they hear, you know, different forms of you know, um, uh, communication, right, online, and then talk to somebody personally yeah. that they know. Um, and, and most of the people that are here uh, online or are here in the restaurant are somebody who's, you know, a personal contact. Uh, well, I think, I think it'd be safe to say that everybody mm -hmm. who is here is a personal contact. But um, so, uh, I mean, from my point of view, look, I'm, I'm also uh cindy like you i'm uh i'm actually newer in town we, we moved in here exactly one year ago mm, december okay. the first of, sure. uh, of last year mm -hmm. and you know we were, listen we were all locked down for for many months and until the summer um so it's nice to be able uh to be out and um uh and i I'd i would personally like to see it grow i think from here we're gonna uh we're gonna break for the uh uh, for the rest of the season mm -hmm. and um, and revisit in, in January. But um, uh, I, th I think there's potential. Look, I belong to networking groups where there was literally like this entire area of the restaurant, like they had, you can have 25, 30 or, or more people. Obviously people would be spread out. There's many tables. How we would integrate mm -hmm. with that with Zoom is different because the mm -hmm. online people would not hear. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's uh, 15, it would be harder, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think it'd be valuable to have um, networking people exchanging business cards and things like that. And I, I would personally like to see that happen. And uh, I hope you'll, um, 
you'll all continue to to support and and bring your friends. Um, yeah, Brian. Yeah, if I, if I can suggest, sure. um, if we don't have a catchy networking name, we should develop one that might okay. bring more people in. So that's just maybe. Okay, that's that's an idea. Do you have anything in mind or? Okay, think about that. I mean, for now, I've, I was just, uh, you know, initially it was Wasaga Beach uh, Business Networking. And then when I saw the video, I thought, because I think it's pretty cool the way it, you know, moves around. Mm -hmm. It's like having a production team here, but it's all handled by technology. So I, I called it um, business, you know, business Networking TV, you know, but <laughs> I, I don't know if that helps or hinders. Some people in you know in the past were afraid to be on camera. If you told them they were going to be on camera, they would run for the hills. But now you know it's so far we haven't had that. It seems people are used to Zoom, digital networking group, something like that. Digital networking group, yeah, yeah. Just so it's different from BNI, right? Right, right. 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 Any David, other thoughts? David, yeah, David, we may need to bring in that high high powered duo of Don and Pamela to fill the, <laughs> fill, fill the beacon. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I know a free good like at magazine for every meeting. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just wanted to say thank you for having me. It was great meeting you all. Um, one thing I do have to leave now because I have another meeting coming up in literally two minutes. Um, I did forget to mention we have a huge print sale on. So anybody that is thinking of marketing in the new year for January and February and Rachel March 17th, we have quarter pages on for as low as $99. So it's a great way if you're thinking of doing it. We've never seen them this low before. I also wanted to ask quickly, Dawn had mentioned that somebody does wills in this group. Are they on this call today? Is that Jude? Yes, was uh, myself. Yeah, I do have uh, oh. yeah, a referral for uh, for Wills uh, and Estate. I think that's uh, she asked. Well, in the email, she asked about it. Yes, I do have that. Yes. It, so do you do them or do you refer it out to somebody else? No, I refer them out. I, I don't uh, I do not do them personally. You don't do them. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, uh, email me because I need one. So. And, and <laughs> just, just so you know, you can do your own will. It's called a, holo a holographic will. Can I get it notarized? Yeah. And then you just have to get it notarized. Is that right, Jerry? Technically, not even. Really? Technically, technically a holographic will, you can literally write on a piece of paper, you know, your, your wishes. And, and technically, that is a valid will. It could be challenged if somebody in your beneficiary world wanted to challenge that they could say hey this isn't really you know it wasn't notarized it wasn't done through a lawyer you don't have to go to a lawyer you don't have to notarize it very important now that's know. very good information thank you my new account and make Jerry. sure somebody knows where it is make sure somebody <laughs> knows where it is yeah did you hear that um, part jerry i said thank you my new accountant jerry <laughs> oh I, I missed that <laughs> 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 right. i just want to say i do have to go but it was super nice meeting you and i hope you all have a very merry christmas and I'll see you there. Here. Thanks for your presentation. Thanks. New so Year. Thank Thanks you. everybody. Merry have a, uh, I'm going to end. Merry the, Christmas. Uh, I'm going to end it now. Okay. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.